Today we're going to be talking about a digital detox. I'm going to tell you what it is, why it can benefit you, and how to go about it. Coming up next. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue. Well, I think a lot of people have heard about digital detox. It is basically when you pick a specified period of time, a week, a month, whatever, and you get off of all social media, TV, electronic devices, everything, and you just detox from all of those things that seem to be demanding your attention all the time. Now, as many of you know, I recently went to Vegas and I was there for eight days. And while I was there, I took that opportunity to do a digital detox. Yes, it was only for a week. But, like a lot of people, I just felt like I was spending a ridiculous amount of time being entertained or scrolling through digital information. And I just felt like I didn't have time for anything, which isn't true for a lot of us. It wasn't true for me. But I thought since I was going to be in Vegas and I really wanted to focus my attention on what I was doing, which was playing poker, and I really wanted to be present and really focus on exactly what I needed to do, I just really had to get off all this digital stuff that is consuming all of my time. So I took that opportunity to do that. Now there were a few exceptions and and I am going to tell you a story about Gracie and a mouse. Gracie's my little dog. Anyway, stay tuned for that. <laughs> but first, let's talk about some of the reasons why you might like to do a digital detox. And number one, like I said, for me, was just to be present. How many times do we find ourselves, or if you look around, see everyone around you staring at their phones? Here I was in Vegas. Almost every single person that I saw at a bar, in a restaurant, family sitting together, everybody's staring at their phone. No one is really enjoying the location or the people they're with. So just being present is a big one. If you're going to spend the money to go somewhere and enjoy something or be with family, don't you really owe it to yourself to be present? Well, I do. And I'm sure you probably do too. So that's a great time to do a digital detox. Number two is sharper focus. I had something I was really focusing on. And I wanted to be sure I gave it my best effort. You know, when we are constantly interrupting ourselves, scrolling through social media, answering email, getting texts, making phone calls, it is like we never get the chance to really focus. I can't tell you the number of times when I've been making bread, get a text, and I'll leave something out. <laughs> when I've been on the computer working, and I'm working on one thing, on a chapter, on a story, and I get distracted, and it takes me forever to get back to it. Distraction is one of the ways that really sucks out your time, because it is hard to refocus. Number three is less stress. You're not getting upset about things you're seeing or hearing. You're not getting dragged into the uh, Facebook conversation that's all drama. You're not allowing people or things or stories or news events to upset your mood, your emotions, or distract you from what you want to do and what you want to feel. So it is much less stressful. <laughs> not to expose yourself to all of those things. And the last things really kind of go together. Number one, you have better conversations, better interactions. You can actually focus on who you're talking to and really absorb what they're saying without the distractions. You also find somehow magically you have more time. You don't really have more time. It's just all of a sudden you realize how much time you were wasting scrolling or looking or reading email or whatever. So it frees up some of your time from, from things that don't matter, like scrolling through social media, to focus on things that do matter. I mean, all of us, I think, feel busy. We're all busy. But how much of that busyness 
is actually focused on things that we want to do or things we're wanting to accomplish rather than just absently scrolling through social media or watching TV or whatever. Now let's say you want a social detox. How do you go about it? One of the best things you can do is pick a time frame. For a lot of people, a week is a good start. I did a week. Um, some people do 30 days. That's a lot. <laughs> um, especially if, if you do a lot of interaction for business or things like that and you have to be on your email. A week you can do pretty easily. You can move appointments, Zoom meetings, whatever. But a month's kind of tough for me, so I did a week. But pick a time frame that works for you. Now the second thing is to notify people. Let them know you're going to be off social media, you're going to be away, you're not going to be reachable. Most people respect that. Now in my case there were a couple of exceptions. Um, I had friends keeping Gracie Mae and watching my kitties. And so uh, I let them know that, you know, if they had an important text or something, absolutely they could contact me. I also have a brother going through a brain cancer treatment and he was having a surgery and so I wanted updates on that. Those were the only two exceptions though. But pick your exceptions if there are any. <laughs> but everybody else just notify them. Say, hey, I'm going to be off social media for a while. Uh, I'm not going to, I'll respond when I get back. Uh, and it's not a big deal. You can easily do that. Now I will say I did get one text while I was sitting at the poker table concerning Miss Gracie May. <clears throat> and I get a text that comes across and it pops up and it says, Gracie ate a dead mouse. And I was like, Ugh. number one, it's repulsive. Number two, I thought, oh my God, was it poison? Was it poison? Gracie's not even six months old. Oh my God, you know. And so I, we did have a conversation really quickly. And of course, everybody at the poker table got to uh, enjoy that, the dead mouse event. Um, and they were out in the middle of ranch land doing their daily run and she found a dead mouse and like a toddler the minute you say hey what's in your mouth they eat it she did the same thing <laughs> uh, thankfully it was not poison it was not a big deal but there again there's good reasons for exceptions to your social media detox and to your uh, texting de detox and that was one of mine but that's the only thing that happened that, of note now once you pick a time and notify people stick with it don't sit there and contact people Use that time for you. Use that time to focus on something else. Use that time just to read a book or go to a movie uninterrupted. Use the time for you, but stick to your plan. If you break your own rules, it's not a detox. So stick to it. And enjoy the break. Enjoy the break. Where you're not feeling like you have to do these things. You will amaze yourself at how much time you now have because you're going, okay, what do I do now? Because you're used to sitting there and scrolling when you don't have anything to do or watching TV or turning on some other digital device, a notepad or computer, whatever. And then assess your results. One of the things that I discovered was I spend way too much mindless time doing things that are unimportant. And I have a business that is involved with videos, YouTube, social media, but I spend way too much time not doing things for that business, just absolutely scrolling through things. I don't need to waste that time anymore. And it feels so much better and less stressful when I step away from it. So I've continued to limit it because it was such a good feeling and I like it. You may have the same uh, discovery about yourself, but I would encourage you to give it a try. Detox for a week and then assess how it went and see how you feel about it and see if it improves your life. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and I'll see you next time.